It's no exaggeration to say that modern society couldn't function without information technologies. Our health, safety, security and well-being depends heavily on a variety of networks and systems providing essential services. We call these critical information infrastructures. Even a short interruption of these networks can have drastic consequences both nationally and across borders, like a mass leak of identity numbers or an electricity blackout. If they aren't secure and resilient, society isn't either. Coming from a human rights-based, user-centric perspective, it's clear that achieving security isn't just about the security of systems. It's about a range of issues from encryption to access, infrastructure development to data ethics. And it's crucial we begin to discuss these issues with a view to preserving human rights, not infringing them. Since these networks do not stop at national borders, trust and cooperation between states is essential to keep cyberspace open, safe and secure. Otherwise, sensitive information related to cyber threats won't be shared, leaving critical information infrastructures vulnerable to manipulation and abuse. But states can have conflicting interests, and their levels of capability aren't always the same. This can cause problems. The way that states try to get around this is through something called confidence and capacity building. What do we mean by this? It refers to measures taken by international community, which include clarifying how existing international law applies to cyberspace, developing norms of responsible state behaviour, sharing information about cyber threats, and developing confidence and security building measures to keep cyberspace open, safe and secure. In this video, we'll be looking at these measures in more detail and outlining the importance of human rights standards in information sharing processes between states. By the end of it, we hope you'll be able to identify the relevant actors and forums where you can engage, have the expertise to contribute to confidence and capacity building between states, make the case for human rights as a crucial enabler for security. What does capacity and confidence building between states mean in practice? Some of the issues which fall under this umbrella include civil defence, military defence, the general resilience of critical information infrastructure, national security and crime investigations. In the past, these sensitive areas were strongly tied to national state borders and the sovereignty of states. But today, states need to cooperate with other countries on these issues to a far greater extent. Many critical information infrastructures and information assets are also used and owned by private sector actors. This makes public-private cooperation an additional and essential element in securing cyberspace both nationally and internationally. Giving another country or a private actor access to your systems and letting them know your vulnerabilities requires confidence that this information will not be abused. This in turn requires trust. Achieving this level of trust can be hard at the international level. That's why most agreements on these issues tend to be between two governments directly or limited to a small group of governments. However, these scattered efforts can be contradictory or incompatible, which makes coordination and cooperation even harder. As a result, it is crucial that states find agreement on confidence and security building measures. These are called CSBMs. One example is the G7 group of governments who issued the following statement about CSBMs. We commit to promote a strategic framework of international cyber stability consisting of the applicability of existing international law to state behaviour in cyberspace, the promotion of voluntary norms of responsible state behaviour during peacetime, and the development and the implementation of practical cyber confidence building measures between states. There's always potential for abuse wherever collection of data and information is necessary from national security to criminal justice. This could mean mishandling of criminal investigations, improper use of shared personal information like monetizing the data through advertisements or targeting political dissidents, surveillance and other privacy intrusions. The frequent cross-border nature of these risks means that they require cooperation between states. But then who sets the human rights standards? And who ensures that any information sharing doesn't harm human rights? Asking these questions from the beginning of every initiative is absolutely essential. By getting involved in discussions on interstate CSBMs, human rights defenders can help make sure that information is gathered, handled and shared in a human rights-respecting manner. 
International human rights law is a crucial starting point. If states placed more importance on shared human rights standards, building trust between states would be easier to achieve. It could help states find compatible mechanisms for agreement and cooperation. Above all, it could help make sure cybersecurity measures focus on empowering the individual, not just protecting systems from harm. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the key players in confidence and capacity building between countries have traditionally been nation states. The first attempts to create cyber capacity building forums were by international organizations and states, like the UN Group of Governmental Experts, the International Telecommunications Union, the African Union, the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, and the Organization for American States. These intergovernmental forums do not just support trust building, they also play a key role in forming binding obligations and voluntary agreements between states. For example, deciding the norms of state behavior for capacity building or information sharing. Many of these forums and initiatives also acknowledge the need to cooperate with industry and other stakeholders. They are slowly transforming into more inclusive models of participation. Generally, more inclusive multi-stakeholder forums like the Internet Governance Forum and other state-led forums like the Global Forum on Cyber Expertise support these efforts. They do this by inviting stakeholder input, creating platforms where cybersecurity development can be discussed comprehensively, generating mutual understanding and identifying best practices. There are many examples of cyber capacity and confidence building initiatives happening now in these forums. Here are a few. The UNGGEs examine existing and potential threats in cyberspace to propose possible cooperative measures between states. All the participating experts are government officials. However, many of them take advice from national advisors, some of whom come from civil society, which means human rights concerns can be raised. The most promising avenue for getting involved is through debates with the GTE representative and their advisors at the national level. Here, identifying relevant cybersecurity issues and supporting a human rights-focused understanding is possible. The OAS develops CSBMs in accordance with the Inter-American Integral Strategy to Combat Threats to Cybersecurity, adopted in 2004. While all OAS members are government representatives, they have been trying to include other stakeholders in their discussion on how to best tackle cybersecurity, acknowledging that cybersecurity needs may vary from country to country. However, much more could be done to bring human rights considerations into the mix. The GFCE launched in 2015 as a global platform where different actors and stakeholders can exchange expertise or capabilities on cybersecurity. Due to its approach, where practical capacities are traded, it has been harder for civil society actors to get as involved as the private sector and governments, who have more resources to offer. But the GFCE is still a promising avenue for human rights defenders. While many initiatives exist, bilateral, regional and international mechanisms to build capacity are still in their infancy. Building trust will take time, coordinated and persistent efforts, as well as dialogue across different forums. So what role can human rights defenders play? And how can you get involved? The first thing to emphasize is that your role is crucial. Unless human rights defenders contribute to the initiatives we've mentioned, we'll never be able to overcome the challenges of mistrust, the cross-border nature of problems, and the need to share sensitive information in a rights-respecting manner. And more avenues for involvement are opening. The processes of capacity building used to be largely between states. Now that they are becoming more open and inclusive, the role of civil society is increasingly valued. There are two main ways you can get involved. You can help build bridges between countries by functioning as mediators. This can help build cross-border relationships, especially in regional and global forums. You can also raise awareness by advising and informing your own governments. For example, by engaging an official before they go to an international negotiation. If you make the case to them successfully, they may, in turn, be able to influence how discussions progress in exclusively intergovernmental forums. National activities can have international impact. We hope you enjoyed this video. In the next one, we'll be looking at capacity building as development and education. Mm -hmm.